Hello, I'm Jill Brown, Academic and Career Advisor with the Moomin College of Business. Thanks for tuning into our podcast, Getting Down to Business. We're so excited to be here with you today. My name is Ashley Curtis, Assistant Program Director for the Bishop Center for Ethical Leadership. And Jill has some exciting bulls buzz for us today. If you have a chance in the St. Pete area, right now we have an exhibit going on, uh, Embrace Embracing Our Differences. I yep. Think. Yes, and it's at Pointer Park until the end of March. And then they also have the same exhibit or different probably panels in Sarasota. So check it out, Embracing Our Differences. It's amazing. Immerse yourself. Uh, it's like you leave, you kind of transport out of this area. So it's a cool that's exhibit. my buzz going on. Love it. So we're really excited. We have two of our finest business honors program students here with us today. We have Gage Young and Thomas Riley. Gage, Tommy, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. So my name is Gage Young. I'm a rising junior. Uh, technically, I'm a, so or I'm a sophomore, but junior credits was, and I'm in the business honors program. And uh, I will be attending the USF in Florence abroad program this summer. Ooh. Awesome. What's your, what's your major, did you say? I'm a finance major. Finance. All right. And my name is Thomas Riley. I'm a finance major and an upcoming junior as well. And I will be studying abroad in Florence as well over this summer. And I just want to thank Jill and Ashley for having us here today. Awesome. I'm just jealous. Now I'm dreaming of Florence already. <laughs> have, have, to be a student again, right? Have, have either of you been abroad? No. Okay. Never before. Cool. All right. You guys are going to have fun. So we have a five-second game that we're going to play. I'm going to read you a topic. Jill's going to start the timer oh, right. after I read the statement. But don't forget the timer. I know. Got to keep them accountable. <laughs> um, and then, so you'll have to come up with three items under this topic. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Are you so ready to wake up? we have up? five seconds to think or five seconds to think and say them? Think and say them. Five, okay. five seconds to respond. Okay. Okay. Got you ready? You ready. Yeah. All no right. pressure, but our last guest did it in like is two. Is it me first or is it both of us? <laughs> you guys are working together as a team. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Your topic is name three ice cream flavors. Mint chocolate chip. Vanilla. Cookies and cream. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. I job. want that one. I know. That was oh. good. I'll take that over All Shakespeare. Right. Yeah. Any day. Right. So I will oh give God. you this All one. Right. All right. And I will hand you the five second. We're going to try to do better than our last episode where we, I think, only... We failed. We we <laughs> had bad luck, yeah. yeah. I'll pick Ask us middle. a good question. Ooh, this one's tough. Wait, if it's tough, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. We might get two okay. chances. Let's oh, see. he's sticking it. <laughs> Find a good one. All right, name three rock bands. Poison. Goo Goo Dolls. Duran Duran. Boom. All 80s. Plenty of time to spare. <laughs> Who'd you say? <laughs> what happened to Taylor? Well, bands, technically. And he said rock oh, bands. Oh, rock bands. No. No Taylor Swift for that. I'll take that. One. I don't know. Well, you could, we, just, we just we'll aged ourselves with that <laughs> answer. I was thinking of uh, the indie race. Yeah, you know? That's what like, I figured it was perfect timing. Yes. <laughs> All right. I like that. Okay. We appreciate you playing. And now we'll dive into the gist of our program for today, but to talk about the Business Honors Program, and how did you two become involved? Yeah, so I became involved. I didn't really know anything about the Business Honors Program at first, but when I got a message from Jeff to kind of telling me a little bit about it and telling me the benefits, um, not only the on-campus housing, because I was very interested in staying on campus my freshman year, but I was worried about the financial part. Mm -hmm. So having the opportunity to, to do it like that first year covered yeah. was really great. Yeah. And also uh, having a requirement to study abroad and a requirement for an internship. So I'm like, sounded like good requirements. <laughs> so I figured why not apply? Yeah. And I was in a very similar boat when it came to that. I got a message over the summer when I was getting ready to come here and they reached out to me and it seemed like a great opportunity to just be held accountable, you know, do things that normally wouldn't do, get out of our comfort zones and just network and be in a group of people that are also highly focused and dedicated. Yeah. Awesome. And I just want to back up a little bit. So for people who are tuning in, we've been saying business honors program, but what is the business honors program? What is it all about? So the business honors program, uh, the size of it varies every year. And you, uh, of course, the St. Pete side of things is a little bit more consolidated, but pretty much it's a group of I think my cohort was 11 students, and they're all business majors, of course, some finance, some accounting, some business administration, marketing, everything. And it, 
pretty much just gives us the opportunity to be with people that are like-minded and kind mm -hmm. of have the similar uh, high school stories with high GPA, um, lots of you know extracurriculars and stuff, and kind of just giving an opportunity to meet people. It was kind of, in my opinion, I think that coming here my freshman year, my first like close friends were all from the business honors program, just because those are the first people that I was kind of forced to mesh with. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's definitely a good way as well to, you know, like you were saying, we met all those people through the business honors program. And it's a good way to kind of mix your schoolwork and your personal life when it comes to networking and meeting new people. You feel more comfortable in the business honors program with a small group of people rather than just being thrown into a big lecture hall or a class with hundreds of people. It's a much more close knit community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you guys have a, a, a nice size cohort. Yeah, and I feel like it helps with that, like you said, transition from high school. And now you already absolutely. have this group. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And it held us very accountable as yeah. well. It gives us, you know, certain goals to strive for. I think our uh, associate director, Mr. Jeff Morris, would appreciate the fact that you received that, like you remember getting the personalized email from him. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's what we're all about, the personal touch here. So. so kind of building off of that, you've shared with us a little bit about what is the Business Honors Program. Um, you know, obviously one of the components to the Business Honors Program is we're allowing you the opportunity to network with different employers and you have done numerous different activities and events through the program. Can you share with us what are what has been some of your favorite experiences? Tommy, I'll start with you and then we'll go to Gage. Awesome, yeah. So there's countless experiences. I could sit here all day talking <laughs> about all the amazing things we've been able to do with the program. But one that started off last year that really, you know, made me believe in the strength of the Business Honors Program was the Business Etiquette Dinner where mm. our cohort went over to Tampa and we mixed with the Tampa cohort. And at that event, we were just able to you know, get dressed in suits, business formal dress. And then we were able to eat a dinner with all of our fellow honors program members and learn a little bit more about, you know, etiquette during dinner, how to eat respectfully, how to respect your authority <laughs> out at dinner. So it's definitely something that you don't really think about until you're put in that position. No. So it was a very eye opening for me. Yeah. For sure. Did you have to interact and talk or answer any questions or have some prompts while you were eating? Yeah, so we didn't have prompts or anything, yeah. but we did have a speaker that was talking the entire okay. time and we were there open for questions mm -hmm. and we just interacted with the people at our table and we were put into random groups for the most part. So we were able to meet some new people from the Tampa cohort and just network that way. Well, that's nice. Yeah, that was yeah. a great opportunity. I just remember our etiquette dinner and... Wow, I learned I was raised in a barn or something. I mean, what you just don't realize in this day and age, I guess, the modern, you just always eat, you know, you yeah. snack too. And yeah, there's an etiquette we yeah. should all be aware of. They told me I had to use a fork. And that was the first time I heard that. Cage? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that happened during our freshman year. And that was definitely where the bulk of the business honors program experiences come in because they are really trying to get you acclimated with the campus and with the new school and everything. But one of my favorite things that the BHP has you know, given us the opportunity for is this year uh, with the speaker series class. Um, each Friday, we will have just an hour class and pretty much all we do in the class is have someone come in and tell, like, give us kind of their spiel, like their life story, how they got from you know, graduating to whatever um, high position they are in now. And you know, I've added countless people to my network just from being a part of that class. And I think that's been invaluable so yeah. far. What do you think is from any one of the speakers, what's um, a, a, a valuable tip that you feel like you've received that you've taken away? Um, I think we met with someone named Fred Espro. He is the operating manager of the Raymond James branch downtown. And he told us one thing that resonated with me is just never have a plan B. And if you want something, don't create a backup plan for you to fall back on because chances are you will fall back on it and you won't achieve your plan A. So that's been something that's been kind of circling around my mind as I make my way out into the professional world. Yeah, I absolutely love it. That's interesting. Yeah, because we hear about plan Bs all the time. Yeah. So it's forcing you to say, hey, take that risk, push yourself, don't don't stop, whatever exactly. that goal is, right? Take Keep the drive. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
hey, it's never bad to have different speakers on campus, and I'm sure you're seeing a variety. And we're going to talk a little more about some of that. Um, I'm kind of curious, what has the Business Honors Program allowed you to do that you may have never done before or yeah. brought into your experience even? Yeah, so definitely one big thing is like the speaker series, just networking with higher wealth, you mm. know, successful individuals that yeah. in the normal walking down the street, you wouldn't really say hi to. You'd probably just be on a little campus. bit nervous or just see on campus. So yeah. that was definitely a big thing that it's allowed me to do. And then also it's given me outlets for a lot of community outreach. We did um, a food drive last year where we were able to make our own cooked meals for the Business Honors Program, oh, cool. homemade meals. And then we walked downtown to give it to the less fortunate downtown, mm -hmm. give them a nice warm meal for the day. And we also did a spike ball tournament where we raised funds for children's Christmas presents. Ooh. So that was just something that, you know, we wouldn't have the outlet to do it or the place or facilities to get anything like that done if it weren't for the Business Honors Program and how much they helped us to make that possible. Had you ever played spike ball before? I did, but let's just say I didn't have a good partner for that one. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Gage? Um, I'm gonna go back to the speaker series thing. Okay. For example, me and Tom yesterday actually because of the speaker series class, we had the opportunity to meet with the CEO of Provaz and just for a friendly lunch. And he showed us this beautiful golf course, uh, a Pelican Country Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think I would ever step foot on a golf course that nice if it weren't for the business honors program and having um, being exposed to Mr. Ferrara through that. You know, kind of along this lines, but how do you feel and, and maybe you feel like you've touched on this and so maybe if you want to elaborate, how do you feel that the Business Honors Program has enriched your USF education? I think, so one thing that's unique for the Business Honors Program is while you're inside of it, so um, on our like degree track, you have to take stats one and stats two. And as a part of the Business Honors Program, we had the opportunity to take both of them in like a combined accelerated course. Ooh. And that's not only saved us money, but also time. And I don't think that, I, I don't think that we would have gained as much knowledge from just like a core class as we did from the um, accelerated yeah, statistics course. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think when it came to the business honors program, a lot of the ways it's helped me educationally is far beyond the classroom. So I really learned from that class that education within the business world is not really, you know, what you're learning in class, that's very important to know, but I've learned that the education you don't get taught is being able to talk to a wealthy businessman, being able to put yourself out of your comfort zone, find a mentor. So it's mm. the things that you don't get taught in class, the things that aren't really black and white, the things that you have to pick up almost naturally. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the Business Honors Program has allowed me to do is just learn about the social and soft skills side of things that you're not taught in the classroom. Which is so important because, you know, developing those um, you know, those power skills, those leadership skills, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what propels you and helps you. If, you know, I'm an employer and I'm looking at two candidates, right? Um, having those skill sets is what's going to help, help you in the long run. And I think sometimes a lot of these topics are discussed in class, but you don't have the opportunity to actually uh, experience it, engage in that type of thing. So yeah, here's how you should write a email, blah, blah, blah. But when you're really doing it and you're going to then go out onto a golf course, I mean, how, you know, whatever that introduction may have looked like, yeah. or if you're going to just reach out on LinkedIn or whatever that might be, luckily through the speaker series, you, mm -hmm. you had the opportunity. So, okay. And we've kind of been hinting and touching around all of this, but if you want, maybe tell some of the students, you know, we obviously want to open this up, let students know what this is all about, and what the coursework looks like within the Business Honors Program. Um, it's pretty similar to that of, you know, just the average USF student, other than the fact that each semester you have one extra class okay. that is only the Business Honors Program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it evolves as you go throughout your academic, you know, journey. Mm -hmm. But, and then other than that, the only other change in coursework is that you have do have to write a thesis by okay. your senior year. Okay. And of course, there are you know lots of resources here at USF that will help you along the way. So That's it's not your as daunting. That's your senior year, though. Yes, your senior way year, down way the all the way at the end. Exactly. And yeah, so <laughs> along the road, just a couple classes each semester that are a little bit different, but otherwise, just like any other USF student. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And within those classes, I would say it's a very easy class most of the ones we've taken it's not something to be stressed about 
if anything, it's something that will benefit us in the long run. Mm -hmm. So like our initial class, we had learned, read and written about etiquette. And then we went and put that into practice at mm -hmm. the etiquette dinner. Gotcha. And then our class this year is the speaker series. Ah. So it's a lot of just personal connections, just mm -hmm. talking to people. So it's not really something to be stressed about. There's not a lot of homework or strings attached to it. It's really just attendance based and just being there and present and just socializing with the people around you. So think way back to when you first applied. I know it's been a while, but what are the requirements for being in the business honors program? So to be in the business honors program, um, well, let me start in the application process. So at least for me, kind of how it went is Jeff sent me an email and kind of expressed his interest in maybe me coming onto the business honors program. And, you know, of course I was interested. So I, I went and applied and you pretty much what you need is you have to fill out the basic application with all of your demographic, your name, everything, your address. And then the biggest thing is you need, I can't remember if it was either two or three letters of recommendation from, mm -hmm. you know, some type of guidance counselor mm -hmm. or high school professor something of that sort. Uh -huh. And then I get, you just wait for a response, wait for a decision. So I'm guessing Mr. Morris must have pre-qualified you in a sense. He's looking for certain criteria. Yes. I, I yeah. think especially um, our freshman year, because correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the first cohort on the St. Pete campus or the second? Second cohort. Second mm -hmm. cohort. So mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure it is kind of targeted on those uh, overachieving students and he kind of they, they'll kind of seek you out. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Biggest one, GPA requirement, uh, 3.5 GPA. Yes. Mm -hmm. leave, correct? Yep. And that's to maintain it as well. So getting in out of high school, it might have been different for everybody's weighted GPA. They just look for community service and leadership mm -hmm. and just involved students that they thought would be a good fit. And then, like Ashley was saying, going forward, we have to maintain a 3.5 GPA just to stay in the program and stay involved. But with all the resources that you get, and all the time that's given to you by the business honors program, it's very simple to maintain a 3.5. And especially with those people around you pushing you to do so. Yeah, sounds good. I'm just thinking, I mean, I don't know if you've practiced pitch yet, but if you wanted to maybe say, you know, to the students, like if somebody's thinking about or prospective students that we'll have coming, you know, what would you say? Like, what's your best, why you should join the business honors program? Yeah, so... I would definitely say that joining the business honors program outside of the education, outside of all the things that you learn from it, is just a great experience to have something to strive for. Mm -hmm. By Like I was saying earlier, putting yourself in a room with like-minded, high-achieving students, you're able to strive to reach higher goals than a lot of other students are even looking at. And then also with that, I think that the business honors program just allows you to have that drive because you have basically the USF logo on your back and you're representing the entire community around us. So being a representative of the business honors program, doing things like being here today kind of just pushes me to succeed and represent our school and do good things that look good for USF as a whole. That's right. Having that logo on your back. Good <laughs> reminder. All right. Okay. What about you? Yeah. And I would say to anyone who feels skeptical, I say, you know, it, it can't hurt to apply and, you know, a lot, I, hear, I hear a lot of people, they get, you know, further into their academic journey and they're complaining that they, you know, can't find any extracurriculars. They don't know how to get involved outside of class, how to set them apart on their resume. And I would say that, you mm -hmm. know, as a freshman in college of the business honors program, there's no better place to start than that. And as soon as you have that name, uh, you know, that title on your name, people take you a little bit more seriously and a lot of doors open that otherwise wouldn't. So... Ah, oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's, really? like, thank you. So before we leave, I just have to say thank you so much. It's been really great learning from you guys about the business honors program. Um, one of the things we talk about is, you know, professional development. And so I'm curious to hear from the both of you, Gage, we can start with you. Um, what do you feel has been a resource, whether that's um, you know, an individual, an article, something um, that has been a resource to you in your professional development? Yeah. Um, I will say um, a really important mentor in my life at the moment, his name is Rick Williamson, and mm -hmm. he works in the information technology division over at Raymond James. And because I, I actually joined the corporate mentorship program this year, mm -hmm. and he has been a huge help just guiding me. He's taken me into the office countless times and really 
stuck his, you know, stuck his leg out for me. And it's been invaluable just in my development professionally. He's opened doors that, um, you know, I never thought I'd be able to step through and introduce me to people that I would have never known if I didn't reach out and try to find a mentor here. How'd you find out about the corporate mentorship program? The same way I found out about the business honors program. I got an email and okay. it sounded interesting. So I put my name in the hat and, you know. Uh, I feel like a good resource would be to check your USF email. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, well, and I was just thinking, Gage, as you were talking, I think so often we get emails. Mm. But what I hear from you is you're taking this mentality of like, one, you're checking the email to Jill's point, but two, <laughs> you're reading it and you're saying, this sounds interesting. Let me find out more about it. Exactly. Right. And then deciding whether or not. You yeah. Want to I mean, it. kudos to you to apply, to do it, to take advantage and then look where it's where it's landed you in a sense. You have this cheerleader in your corner constantly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Advocate for you. How about you, Thomas? Huh? Definitely. So just similar to that, when it goes back to checking emails, everything like that, I would say that it's hard to pinpoint just one resource from mm -hmm. USF that's helped me along the way because we're constantly getting emails of promotions that they're doing, giving out things to students, or just inviting students to events where they can go listen and learn from people who have done all of this before in their life, mm -hmm. and they can really take away from that. Also, just the affordability, the things that USF offers, a lot of the Microsoft Access, yeah. Adobe, all these different software programs that are huge in the world of business, especially today, that are made available to us because I know a majority of students wouldn't be able to afford those yearly subscriptions, and also things like Barron's Magazine was paid mm -hmm. for by Ray Farrar, who we had the ability to meet. So just things like that, that are free to students. And if you really take advantage of it, there's plenty of, there's endless resources that mm -hmm. you can get from the library or just from checking your emails. So I would just say that USF as a whole has really done a great job pushing us to use those resources. And if you take advantage of it, there's a lot to be learned. Tom, can I have you expand on Barron's? Cause Barron's, I think, is a really powerful resource that not a lot of students yeah. are aware of or at least have heard the name, but they don't know what it does. Can you talk about what's available through that Barron's subscription? Yep. So, yeah, Barron's is just almost like the Wall Street Journal or another any business journal like that or newspaper or scholarly articles. But Barron's itself is mostly focused on just everything in the business world, the trends currently, any big events that are going on. And it's usually something that would be really expensive to pay for. But thankfully, due to USF, we're able to access that for free. So to stay on top of it, you can access Barron's and it has all of the daily updates, all the different things going on in the business world that you might not see just walking around in your daily life. And it's definitely great for a business student just to see what's really going on in the world around them. I feel yeah. like it might be useful with some of your courses, too especially when you have to pick out topics or write on something. Hey, here's something I just recently read in Marin. So. And just professional development, like to your point with huh. the events, there's a lot of events, whereas you're looking to kind of acquire skills, add skills, all that stuff is really helpful. I wanted to just ask, which if you've already said it, we can just cut this right out, but <laughs> like, do you have a go-to resource at USF? Just out of curiosity, because a lot of times we're trying to connect with students and, you know, we're, we're saying go to Bulls Connect, go to Handshake, go to Instagram, follow one of those handles with USF MUMA, what have you. Is there something that you, either of you use? So I follow on Instagram a lot. I follow USF, USF St. Petersburg, USF mm -hmm. Ambassadors. Okay. Just things like that where they're constantly reaching out. And that's where I get a lot of my information. If it's not through Outlook, it's mostly through Instagram pages. Okay. So I can stay up to date because, you know, yeah. nowadays everyone's on Instagram, so following a USF Instagram kind of forces you to see it and it's okay. definitely helpful. That's good to know. I'm always yeah. just thinking, how can we reach students? Yeah. <laughs> and then LinkedIn is also huge. Yeah. I think that's been a huge resource for me. And USF does a great job in the earlier studies, really pushing students to get involved on LinkedIn. Create your profile. Create their profile. That's which right. definitely helped me a lot. Start following companies of interest, mm -hmm. reaching yeah. out through LinkedIn. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, so my resource for all things USF is a little bit unorthodox. I um, it has to do with my how I see everything through email. Um, for me, the most beneficial part has been like as a business major at USF, you get you know inserted into the Muma College of Business Canvas course, and through that you get tons of notifications. Pretty much every business related event going on going on on campus. Okay. If there are any scholarship opportunities, mm -hmm. and when you get that notification on Canvas, it pops up in your Outlook, and that's pretty much how I've found 
Okay. Almost every single piece of information that I've found. Nice. Excellent. All right. We appreciate you both being here, giving our audience a great pitch. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Getting Down to Business. Follow us, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. We'll see you next time. <laughs>